Hello, my beautiful computer science students. Welcome to another lesson in Unit 5, Writing Classes. Today's lesson is going to be over accessor and mutator methods, as well as the toString method. Um, and we're going to be talking about all of these and how they're added to our object created our object creation class to um, just help us work with our object data a little bit more. So where we left off in the last lesson, um, we talked about how we have private instance variables and that um, makes it so that we cannot access them directly. And we talked about using that object reference dot variable name. So whatever your object reference variable is, the dot notation, and then the actual name of your instance variable. If we had public instance variables, that would be okay to do, but we don't. If we want to have the ability to access them, or in other words, just to view their contents, right? So we make an object, we give that object data, um, now we want to see that data, okay? It's protected, yes, but later on in the program, maybe we want to see it somehow. We need to create a public method that allows us to do this. Okay? The instance variables are private, so we cannot see them directly, but we can see them through a public method. These methods that we're going to create, these are called accessor methods, or a shorthand called getters. Okay, So accessor methods allows an object to obtain the value of their instance variable. So if we create an object in a class and now we want to access that object's instance variable, that object's data, we use an accessor method. So they have the following properties. Um, they are public, right? Because we want a separate class other than the object creating class. We want a separate class calling on it. So they have to be public. Um, the return type matches the instance variable that it's returning. Um, so it's a public method that's going to be returning an instance variable, returning that instance variable to whatever is calling it. Um, there is a specific naming convention for it. Of course, naming conventions aren't um, set in stone, but you will see these uh, throughout the course. It's the word get, lowercase g, followed by the instance variable name, um, usually capitalized or camel case, and then there's an empty parameter set after that. An accessor method doesn't accept any parameters. It simply returns an instance variable. Um, and the only thing inside the method itself is just the statement, a single statement called return, and then whatever that instance variable is going to be. So we're going to write the accessor methods for our dog class from lesson one that we've been working with this whole unit. So here's the partial class. I left out the constructors because we're not going to use them right now. Um, but we had three instance variables, name, age, and good dog. And we're going to make the accessors for them. So let's start off with our name. Okay. So we have uh, our first instance variable here, private string name. So Name would be like if we created a dog object and gave it a name, and then we want to see what that actual name is. So our method is going to start off as public. The return type is going to be a string because name is going to be represented as a string. And then the method itself is going to be get name. Okay? So here's that method header, public string get name. So you see that kind of naming convention for the accessor method. An empty parameter set because it's not going to accept anything. And then inside that return that method is going to be just a return statement where you're going to return this instance variable name. Okay. So you call on this method when you want to get that data, that name. Next we have our um, private int age. Okay. So it's going to be public. Uh, we're going to return an age, so the return type is going to be an int, and it's going to be called get age with an empty parameter set. Inside, you see we're returning age, the actual name of what that um, instance variable is. So you see the pattern here? We do these for all instance variables. So we'll also do it for public Boolean get good dog. Okay. Um, now I capitalize the G and the D here, get good dog. Okay, of course, in the actual instance variable itself, 
the one that we return, you see that it's not capitalized. Again, that's just kind of a naming convention. The first letter is lowercase, the get, and then every separate word after that is camel case. If it varies a little bit, it's not that big of a deal. Um, you'll be making these um, in your projects in this class and some of your assignments. On the AP exam, they usually don't have you write these accessor methods just because they take a long time kind of depending on how many instance variables you have. But on the AP exam, because you're writing code, they don't have you actually write out all of the accessors for all of the instance variables. So when you're doing projects and assignments in this class, you can be a little flexible with how you um, upper and lower case those. Okay? But the convention is the get, 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 and then followed by what instance variable you're getting. So these would all go in that object creating class. Now, how do we use them? Or in what instance would we use them? So consider the following code segment, which is going to appear in a class other than dog. Okay. Um, so we're going to create a new dog object. Uh, dog, it's going to be called doggy is our reference. New dog, scrappy to false. Okay. Um, so I create that using the constructor. And then inside this print statement, notice how I have doggy.getName. Okay, so I can't do doggy dot name, right? We talked about this, how because name is private, this would be a syntax error, okay? This is not allowed because name is private. So in order to get the doggy's name, now we're going to use a method, get name method. So we'll go to our get name. So it says doggy is our object. So you're going to go to the objects class which is dog, doggy is a dog object. So go to the objects class and go to the method get name, okay? Get name, what's it gonna return? It's gonna return name. Whose name is it gonna return? It's gonna return the calling object's name, okay? So it knows it's going to return the name of doggy since doggy was what called get name method. So it would print off scrappy. And that's your accessor. So anytime you want to access it, so just um, use it to see it, use it somehow in your other class, um, you'll use a, an accessor method. Okay, the next type of method we're going to talk about is the toString method. The toString method is called an overridden method, and it's included in an object class to provide a um, description or a string of a specific object. Um, generally, it just includes what's stored in the instance data of the object. Um, it's considered overridden because it's going to override the object super class that all object created that all objects um, creating classes um, inherit from. Now, inheritance is discussed more in Unit 9, at least in this course. Um, so for now, kind of keep that tucked away in your brain. Um, the word overridden, we'll discuss it extensively in Unit 9, okay? For now, know that this two-string method is going to form a nice string that shows the values stored in the instance variables. And I say nice as in it's going to return um, just a formatted string and formatted in a way that it just regurgitates all of the data of an object. Okay, So it has the following properties. It is public because another class is going to call on it and it's going to return a string. It has no parameters, kind of like your accessor, no parameters. Um, and in its body, you're going to have a single return statement that returns a long string or you can have the option to declare a few strings and return all of them concatenated together. Okay, Either way, you're returning a string. It's just kind of, you know, potato, potato, whatever you want as a program or whatever kind of feels a little bit more right. So I'm going to show you those two options. So this one is when you have just returning a big long string. So you see it's public string and it's called two string. It's always called a two string. Um, and it needs to be called toString in order to do this because it's an overridden method, okay? So toString, empty parameters, and then I have inside a return statement. And here, I'm going to have a nice 
big, long string, <laughs> okay? So this is for dog, remember. So I have my instance variable name plus a space plus the age plus another string with a period, a space is name again, a good dog. And then I have instance variables. So I'm using the instance variables inside this string. And what it's going to return is the data put into that nice long string. Okay, And this is how it looks if it's just all one string. Here's how it would look if you wanted to concatenate a few variables together. Okay, So if this looks a little bit better for you, you can declare two strings first and second. It's saying the same thing, it's just broken up basically on two lines. Okay, If you're just kind of a visual person who likes that a little bit better, and then you return that concatenation. Okay, What you'll probably see, what I'll do, and what you'll probably see is more of just the full return statement, um, but I wanted to show you the second option as well, that people do have that um, put down in there. Okay, so here's two ways we can use the two-string method. Okay, Note that these statements are going to appear in a class other than dog. Okay, So again, we're creating a new dog object called doggy equals new dog scrappy two false. Now in the print line statement, if I call the method doggy.toString, Okay. Again, dogging is, doggy is my reference, and I call on the toString method. So since doggy is a dog object, it knows to go to the dog class and look for the toString method. It finds the toString method, and it's going to return all of this. Okay. What's it going to print off? Well, it's going to print off that entire statement, but instead of that instance, those instance variables, those variable names, it's obviously going to print what is stored in those variables for doggy. So this is going to print off scrappy space to period is scrappy a good dog and then it's going to return um, the boolean at the end there. Okay, So it prints off that entire thing, everything formatted nicely. Now of course I formatted it asking is scrappy a good dog. You could have formatted this string any which way. Okay, um, it's totally up to you how you want to format your two string. This is just what I did. Here's the other way you can print it off. Okay, notice how I still have doggy, but now instead I just use the reference name. Okay, just the reference name. I don't even have a call to the two string method. What's cool about this is that it'll still print off that two string method. Okay, um, it'll automatically run the toString method in an objects class if you just have the reference here. Okay, when you just use that reference name. If an object does not have a toString method, it uses the objects superclass, um, and the superclass prints off a memory location in your computer, which is just totally useless to us. We don't use that. Okay. Um, so again, that object superclass idea is going to be talked about in unit nine. Um, but just know if you try to do this without making a two string method, it'll still work. It'll just kind of be kind of a weird thing that prints off. Okay. Yeah, that's the two string method. The last thing we're going to talk about is the mutator method. Okay, so in addition to be able to access private instance variables and just see them, sometimes we want to actually modify them. And we know we can't modify private instance variables directly. Again, we could do it if the instance variables were public. We could use this statement to modify it using the object reference like doggy dot name equals Scooby. Okay, or whatever we wanted it to be. If name was public, we could do that. But name is not public, so we can't do that. So in order to mutate or to change any data, <laughs> we create another public method and use it to modify the contents of the instance variable. So this is a mutator method okay, when we want to mutate the data, or it's also called a setter. Okay, It allows an object's instance variable to be changed after the object has already been created. Okay? Somehow, for some reason, we want to change um, change the value somehow. Mutator methods have the following properties. Like accessors, they are public because another class is calling on them. The return type now is void, though, because they actually don't return anything to, um, to its uh, method call. They just mutate it. 
And in order to mutate it, um, it needs to accept a parameter. Okay? But before I get to parameters, the naming convention. I'm getting ahead of myself. The naming convention is set followed by the instance variable name. So instead of like get name, it's set name. And it does accept a single parameter that represents the instance variable that it will be changed to. So whatever you want to change your instance variable to, you have to pass it as a parameter. And there's no return statement. Okay? Inside that mutator method, oops, excuse me. Inside that mutator method is just going to be your instance variable equal to whatever that parameter value is. Okay? So just still a single statement in there. And you guessed it, we're going to write our, excuse me, mutator methods for our dog class. Okay? So here's that class again. Now we're going to actually write our mutator methods. So it starts off, let's do the name one. I guess you kind of already saw it there, so I'll pull it back up. Public, void, because there's no return type here. It's called set name is the, is the method name. And then in parameters, we want to accept a string. Since name is represented as a string, we want to accept a string. Okay? And then inside is just a single statement where we take the instance variable and we set it equal to whatever variable we had in the parameter, uh, the parameter list. Okay, so that's going to take okay whatever we pass it in parentheses and set it equal to our um, instance variable. We're going to do the same thing with age. Public void set age is going to accept an integer. Okay, age equals a, and then same thing with good dog. Okay, it's going to accept a Boolean. Good dog equals whatever Boolean is passed. Okay. So again, mutators and accessors are what we write um, with every object creating class. Okay. Every time we write them for each instance variable. Now, will we use them? Um, well, maybe it makes sense to change the a age. It makes sense to change if they're a good dog or not. Maybe it makes sense to change the name, but these mutators, you don't make them necessarily because they make sense. You make them every time for all of your instance variables in case you ever do have to change them. Some objects, it makes sense to change data after you've already created the object. Um, other times, it's like, why would I make a mutator method for this when the data is never going to change? Always write it because you never know, okay? You never know using a mutator though. Okay, consider the following segment of code, again, which appears in the class other than dog. Okay, so we create our doggy scrappy to false. Now I have here doggy dot set name and I pass it scrappy do. Okay, so it's gonna, I'm gonna add the full name scrappy do. Okay, so it goes to the set name and becomes scrappy do and scrappy do is become, gonna become the new name of my um, object doggy. Okay. So that's kind of the chain of how Scrappy Doo gets put into um, the name of my doggy reference. And then if I were to go out and print off doggy.getName, <laughs> so if I use that accessor, it's going to print off Scrappy Doo because the name was changed. Okay. And that's your mutator methods. <laughs> okay, so that is accessors, the two-string method, and the mutated me mutator methods all together. And that brings us to the end of this lesson, accessor and mutator methods. So as always, thank you so much for watching, um, and I will see you in the next lesson.